are told to work hard to become independent and successful in life, but we're also told to give joyfully and not to cling to the things we work so hard to get. God reminds us that everything is His. We are entrusted on this earth with time, talent, and treasure. In this podcast, we will learn to live as Jesus teaches. Hey, welcome back to the Entrusted by God podcast. I'm Steve Wood. I'm the lead pastor at Mount Pisgah Methodist Church. We welcome you today into our journey and our discussion of God leading us in the life we've always wanted, the life that God created for us to be a disciple of Jesus and live that life entrusted unto us by God and live it well. I'm joined by Joel Knowles and Dwayne Wood and Ray Bachman, and today we are, are going to kind of continue the thematic that we have talked about the last couple of podcasts, and that is the real grunt work of what it means to persevere in our faith in Christ over a long period of time. You know, uh, we're tempted to kind of uh, uh, take on a bargaining posture with God. You know, God, if you'll do this, then I'll do this. And if you'll do this, I'll do this. But really, if we understand the invitation to the Lordship of Jesus, he is inviting us not to give him a tithe of our life or part of our life or most of our life or even most all of our life. It's an all-in total Lordship that we would wholly give ourselves to the goodness of God. So we talked uh, last time about uh, the book of Romans, and Paul did a really good job of helping the church there in Rome and us understand that, you know, if you're going to glory in the hope of Christ, it's going to be done in the context of real life, which includes suffering and test and trial But those things are not punishments, they're tools, instruments, if you will, of God's grace to grow in us maturity. So now we go to the book of James, and we look at James chapter 1, and Dwayne, you have a passage today that reveals truth in terms of the progressive nature of God's work, God's redemption, God's transformation as we go through through these, as James uh, describes them. You want to read those for us today? Yes, I'm reading from the New King James Version, uh, James 1, 2 through 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces, produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Lacking nothing. That's quite a promise, isn't it? It it, it is, and um, you know the note that I have here in my my Bible refers me back to uh, two Samuel sixteen five through fourteen when Shimei was cursing David, <laughs> and David told his people they're asked to let him go cut it cut his head off and david's like no i'm not going to do that because it's probably from the lord that he's criticizing me Mm -hmm. and so let me just endure this let me listen to this and let me hear what god's trying to say to me Mm -hmm. and so these issues sometimes i know we think oh lord why is this happening to me? And I've said it repeatedly mm-hmm. in these podcasts, but it's, oh, Lord, what are you trying to teach me? Please help me understand. You know, when, when it says consider it pure joy, when I think of joy, I just think of just the happiest times and just the blissful times, whether it's vacation or whether it's the beach or the mountains or <laughs> just everything lining up or I just – had a big insurance sale. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, that's what I think of joy, okay? <laughs> but but he's not talking about um, circumstantial joy. He's talking about everlasting joy because when, when you face trials and tribulations, um, it's not emotional joy. It's, it's hard. Um, 
again, like we've talked about, you know, silver and gold are refined by heating up the uh, the vessel that it's being purified in, and the dross is scraped off, is heated hot, hot, hot. And that's part of that sanctification in our lives is that um, we go through that difficult time because God wants to draw all those impurities. He doesn't make things happen. It's just things happen, and uh, it brings a lot of things to the surface, and we have the cho- choice. I remember, you know, the pastor was here at um, at uh, Pisgah years ago. He lost his son in an airplane right. accident. Remember yeah, that? And I'll never forget, um, actually, out of the 103 people that passed away in that airplane um, situation, five of them from Mount Pisgah, and one of them was his son. I remember him preaching a couple weeks later. I'll never forget it. And his message was, when you go through difficult times, you either become bitter or better. And I really appreciated his mm. his walk, because I'm sure, I mean, gosh, I could not imagine losing a child. Um, but uh, whatever the circumstances of the situation, we have the choice to become bitter or better, to either trust God or push back and say, you know what, this isn't working for me. I'm kind of going to run my ship from now on and I'll give God, you know, Sundays from 11 to 12, but that's about as far as I want to go. What we don't realize, just like a muscle has to be torn down in order to be built up, that's what happens to our faith. These difficult times, look at the Old and New Testament. I mean, nothing but tragedy after tragedy of men and women of God, but God was refining them. Look at mm-hmm. Job. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, read through Job and you think you have a bad day. He had a really bad day. And but yet it built his faith um, through it all, and I think we have to put it in perspective because as we talked about, this life is so short, and the choices we make can be devastating uh, for the good or for the bad for all eternity. And so we do need to consider it joy because God wants the best for us, and um, what we go through is part of that sanctification process. He's refining us and 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 conforming us more to the image of Christ. It's painful. It's painful. But it's joyful because joy is everlasting peace mm. and contentment. You know, the the passage is not about just the difficult things that all people go through in life. I mean, every human being goes through struggles, sufferings, injustice, uh it's just a part of the fallen nature of this world. James is speaking specifically to when our faith is tested. All right. And that's important because it's not just suffering. It's suffering for Christ's sake, so to speak. And so, you know, he says, the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Why? Because we know that God has promised in the end he's victorious, and thus we're victorious. We just have to persevere in these tests. And then we let perseverance finish its work, which would tell me that our faith has to be tested as many times as God needs to test us to actually begin to temper our faith. But look at the product. Here's the pure joy, Ray, like the list you made. Mm -hmm. The pure joy is in becoming mature and complete. And that word complete is a Greek word, teleos, that's used in Matthew 19, where Jesus said, hey, you be perfect like your heaven Mm -hmm. and father is perfect. Uh, like your father in heaven is perfect, mm-hmm. and uh, it's it it's not translated literally perfect. It's complete, as mm-hmm. in whole, not mm-hmm. lacking anything. Mm-hmm. I would remind the uh, the listeners to look at the patriarchs, our spiritual fathers. Um. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And just, you see this repeated cycle. The more you read it, the more you study it, the more you understand that there's a repeated cycle where God is testing their faith. 
time after time after time. And he's doing it not as a test that we think of as in pass or fail, because they didn't pass, most of them. (laughs) But (laughs) it's testing in the uh, vein of making you stronger and building up one's faith Mm -hmm. and learning how to continue to depend on God to where each one of them uh, at the end exercised a great amount of faith Mm -hmm. and a great amount of trust in what the Lord was doing and learned to let him lead instead of them lead. And there's numerous examples we could talk of with those patriarchs, but I, I just find that very interesting. You know, when, when I first read this verse the very first time, I'm like, Lord, I don't know if I want to be mature or pick on somebody else. <laughs> but, but, but it's God's plan that he, that he builds this type of character. And in fact, in um, 2 Corinthians 4, 8, it says, We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. So in all aspects of that verse, we're hard pressed, um, we're perplexed, and we're struck down. So those are the definite difficulties that we go through. But the answer is we may be pressed, but we're not crushed. We may be perplexed, but we're not abandoned. We may be struck down, but not destroyed. So God is faithful. And we just need to realize in the middle of whatever we're going through, how difficult it is. It's not the end. You know, um, the end is that Christ is with us through the thick and the thin. I mean, you read Psalm 23. I mean, the the most famous psalm ever written. I mean, God is with us through the dark, dark valleys. And again, everybody wants to be on the mountaintop, but mountaintops are only designed, are only built because there's valleys on, on either side. And those are the those are the times when when we really need to hang on. Um, with all of our faith that that God will carry us through the difficult times. <laughs> and it is, it's yeah. it's a painful process, but it's like I remember someone saying, if you're in the middle of a, of a war, do you want to be in the foxhole with the new recruit out of West Point that that's his first assignment? Or do you want to be with that old <laughs> veteran that's been shot up in a couple world wars? No, give me that mature veteran that has been there before to help me work through this. And that's, that's what Christ is there for. He's been through it all, and he um, offers that to us, that peace and joy and contentment that only he can give through those difficult times. Yeah, so I, you, I think you guys are really into the application of this well uh, with the illustrations you're using from the patriarchs and the generational images I mean, think about this. Our role generationally is simply to pass the gospel, the word of God that's been entrusted unto us and the life-giving Holy Spirit onto uh, our children, onto our peers, our coworkers, next generations. So, uh, Dwayne, if we go back to your illustration of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob— uh, then you could go a little further, but just track with me generationally how this has worked out. You don't think Moses' faith in God mm. was tested? Like, how many times are you going to let Pharaoh uh, pull the football away from us while we're trying to kick it and trick us? You know, you have to wonder. Then, after Moses trusted God and got them all the way, got them out of the Dead Sea, right? all the way where they could see from the mountaintop to the promised land, uh, the Lord raises up a new generational leader. And just put yourself in Joshua's shoes for a minute on how his faith was tested. He'd seen all this miraculous stuff. He could now see across the Jordan River from Mount Pisgah, from Mount Nebo. Mm. All right. But his actual call was into the valley to cross a river. Hmm. If you look back, there is no turning back because there's a wall of people trying to kill you Mm -hmm. and all kinds of geographical obstacles. 
if you look forward, uh, there are things you can see that are obvious impediments, but thank God he didn't that he didn't already know how many people there were that were going to have to be conquered across the river and their size and their mightiness. It would have been intimidating. But all along the way, he was tested. Will you trust me? Will you trust me for this step to cross the Jordan? Will you trust me for the next step? Conquer Jericho. Will you trust me for the next step? And so practically applied, we need not get worked up that uh, we need for the Lord to show us the next 40 years. We'd probably fall over dead if we really knew the kind of tests and trials we were in for in a prolonged view. The idea is live in the moment. The Lord is our portion. The Lord is our banner. And God has provided to meet all of our needs in accordance with his riches and glory. That's Philippians 4. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're, we're called to trust and obey. That's what we're called to do. That's a good song, trust it, and obey. It is, but it's, <laughs> there's that's what we're called to do. We're to trust in the Lord and we're to be obedient. We're to obey his commands. And when we're doing that, um, I find that the focus comes off of our poor, pitiful selves <laughs> and goes on to others, and then things become mm-hmm. a lot more tolerable. And, you mm-hmm. know, I'll, I'll take us back to this this um, word, joy, and uh Joy is finding your salvation in the Lord always, no matter what the circumstances are. It's learning to to be uh, joyous in in all occasions and not happy based on your happenings or your your circumstances. Mm -hmm. Uh, We've said this on the podcast before, but Paul tells us that that you can you can learn contentment uh, is not necessarily contentment, but it's it's in line with contentment. It's the joy, and there's joy in contentment. Mm-hmm. There's more joy in contentment than there is happiness in wealth or riches. Uh, there's more joy in contentment. Yeah, you know, yesterday I was with one of the guys. I've been young guys. I've been discipling for years, and unfortunately, he lost his mother. Um, about a month mm. ago in a bad car accident. It just was horrible, unexpectedly. And we were together, and, you know, of course, you know, it's he's one of three sons, and, and uh, his, his father was hurt in the accident, and it's totally turned their life upside down. And um, he said, Ray, he said, I would have never wished this on anybody, but I can still see God's work in and through this. He said, we have become closer as a family than we've ever been before. Wow. And he said, I would never have wished this on anybody, and I would never have thought this could happen, but God, through this horrible circumstance, has brought us together and has broken down some some stone walls that we didn't think we'd ever deal with. And um, he said, I can't explain it, but um, God has worked everything for good, even the hard things. And it just, I mean, it was, it was powerful. powerful. It was yeah. powerful um, because— she was kind of the somewhat of the patriarch of the family, along with the dad, and um, it's just it just was devastating. But but there that that was a case in point, a live case in point of God can give you joy in the midst of the worst circumstances you could ever imagine, and He will sustain you. I mean, it was just so evident that God was sustaining him and his family through this difficult grief. Of course, you know we all know we lost a brother in Christ last week in our church here Mm -hmm. and um, just how God has come in and really lifted up that family and brought others around them because they have joy that they're going to see these individuals because they were believers in Jesus Christ. And they have the joy that, you know what, we're going to see them someday. We're going to see them for all eternity. This is kind of a short stint in this life. Um, And only God can give us that perspective. Only, only, Jesus is the hope that we have that there is an opportunity to see these loved ones who have passed on in the future for all eternity. And that's, that's amazing when you think about it. Yeah, what an amazing promise. 
And so as uh, your uh, young man mm-hmm. who uh, you were mentoring mm-hmm. has experienced really the testing of his faith mm-hmm. and this kind of tragedy and the kind of questions you could ask God about it, the reality of it is, is the Lord has worked redemptively to strengthen his faith. And now he has a gift for the next person who deals with tragedy, mm-hmm. accidental death, grief, and the questions beg, how do we survive this? And the answer is, it's by the grace of God. Mm-hmm. So this is uh, our commendation to you, that God's promises are true. If you're in a time of trial, if you're in a time of test, if your faith is being tested over any particular issue, let us offer you encouragement and support and this unshakable promise that God is with you in it. God will never leave you nor forsake you, and God will work redemptively to strengthen your faith that on the backside of it, that you would discover joy and peace and significance and be mature and complete and not lack anything. Hey, if we can help you in that journey, feel free to reach out to us at mountpisgah.org. And until we meet again, God bless you and stay the course. Join us next time as we continue to learn to live with open hearts and open hands as followers of Jesus Christ. 